It's easy to look around and notice everything wrong in your city. In this podcast by Every Neighborhood Partnership, join Grace and Andrew as they invite friends, activists, pastors, leaders, and city workers to discover what's good in the neighborhood. Join us for insightful conversations that will encourage you to see your city and its people in a new way. Hey friends, welcome to What's Good in the Neighborhood. Today on our very first episode of our very first season, we get the chance to chat with our coworker and friend, Daniel Dominguez. Daniel invites us into a conversation about what it looks like when we talk about this concept of in Fresno as it is in heaven or in your city as it is in heaven. We kind of do a 3000 aerial foot view of that idea. Why does God care about the city? Why does God care about how his people interact with the city? And are we called just to serve it? Or is there something that we also can benefit from reciprocally from the people and communities and residents in a city? This conversation hopefully will push you a little bit, challenge you, but also encourage you that uh, in God's economy, we all get to sit at the table together. We hope you enjoy. Well, welcome to our first episode of What is Good in the Neighborhood, Grace. I'm so glad we're finally doing this. Andrew, this is a long time coming. Yes. How fun that we got to brainstorm together and now we're sitting here doing this. This is a fruit of one of my sabbatical goals. I, I realized I love to create and I haven't in the last couple of years done as much creating as I wanted. I am a OG podcast uh, person. When podcasting was hard, you had to you know, download it from iTunes, connect your phone. It was, it was work. It's been a while. Tell the people the name of your OG podcast. Oh, yeah. I, I worked at Fresno Pacific and I had a sports podcast, The Sports File. F E I L. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> so good. Well, we are so excited to be here. Like we said, what's good in the neighborhood is really for us as every neighborhood partnership, an extension of sharing out we feel like we have a wealth of knowledge uh, in a lot of ways. We feel like we have a bit of a treasure box of things that we kind of dole out here and there. And then people go, oh my gosh, I've never heard that before. Or that's in a completely new framework of thinking about something. And so really this, the podcast is a fruit of you and I looking at each other and going, how do we give this out more regularly to people. Yeah, totally. And I think the one of the joys there too is like, I get to hang out with amazing people all day who love and care for others and they're doing it in creative, thoughtful ways. And so I get to hear their story. I get to hear about, how, you know, what does that look like in their nonprofit, their church, their organization, whatever thing they're trying to do. And so this will also be a place that like, hey, we get to invite our friends to have this conversation together. Yeah. So fun. That's cool. Well, uh, we should probably say some of you know who we are, but yes. we should probably say who we are. So my name is Andrew File. I'm the executive director of Every Neighborhood Partnership. Uh, I have been on staff for about eight years and executive director for three Grace, who are you? What yeah. do you do here? I'm Grace Berg. I am the development and communications coordinator here. Uh, and I've been here a little bit over a year and a half. So a long, long time. Um, but I come from a parachurch organization world, uh, worked for an uh, author, speaker, podcaster um, in the Christian sect. And so, uh, yeah, it's fun to now where I live, um, give back to it in some way and also be a part of what's happening. So that's cool. Yeah. You know, you've been awesome. We okay. love having you around. Um, and so the thought for this first series for us is kind of to do like a, what are the foundations of EMP? What, what are some of the guiding philosophies, principles, um, structures that have really informed and shaped who we've become. Uh, and to start there, and then our next series following this will be, actually we have a, a really amazing drive tour launching that's actually GPS guided. So we want to bring on some of those friends that are on the tour. So those are our first two series. We're totally open and would love to hear feedback. If you all have ideas of things you'd want us to lean into, uh, those are going to be our, probably our first like eight episodes, right? Yes. Something about that? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to lean in there, uh, and we're just excited to see where this journey takes us. We have no idea where it'll go, but I think it'll be a really fun venture for EMP. Yeah, 
Totally. So today we get to talk about this concept of in Fresno as it is in heaven, um, which has been an idea that's kind of um, framed so much of what we do. Yeah. Sorry. I was drinking some water there. Uh, <laughs> wrong timing. My fault. Uh, yeah. That's, I mean, it's really framed for us. Like what I think what I've realized over the time is you have to have an imagination of what you're trying to achieve. Like yeah. What everybody has that, they just don't always articulate it. Uh, and for me and for EMP, uh, the scriptural vision that God is on the move and he is inviting us to be a part of the transformation of the city here and now. And that is what we do and are a part of. Whether the work we do is always faith explicit, it's the roads that are created, the way we even go about our work, that is part of the rebuilding that God is doing. We're not going to see that full vision happen, uh, but we wanted to just start there. Just like, because I think the theological, the practical imagination of why are we about this work has so influenced our organization um, that to start at those roots is the best place to start for us. So to do that, uh, we have one of our good friends uh, and coworkers, Mr. Daniel Dominguez. Hello, hello. Honored and privileged to be here with y'all. Super excited. Love the energy. Yeah. Thanks for being our first guest and, and for helping us in this uh, topic. Daniel, give us a little bit. Who are you um, and what has brought you uh, to this work? Why does this work matter? Uh, even tell us a little about what you do. Oh, man. How much time do I have? <laughs> um, yeah. Daniel Dominguez. Um, yeah, I guess a little context here. So I became urbanized, as I like to say, in 2009. That's when I moved into Fresno. And I'm sure we'll get into this a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, I, I was on uh, coming back from a missions trip to Central America. We were landing at Fresno Yosemite uh, Airport. And our team was kind of like, hey, we, we're done. You know, we, we checked the box, so to speak. And... Um, Getting emotional now, just like rethinking, reliving that, um, mm. because that's where my heart broke for Fresno. I remember coming down to the tarmac and looking over Fresno and just thinking, actually, I think it's just begun. Wow. Um, it was really a life changing moment for me. The mission experience was great, it was phenomenal. We did some awesome things. Um, and so I don't want to downplay that by any means, but I think, yeah, something really transitioned within me at that moment. Yeah. And so right away I, I started finding like where are the places to get plugged in and an easy on-ramp was Saturday sports, which EMP started, you know, 15 some odd years ago. Yeah. And uh, that was through a partner, a church I was with at the time um, that led into a few years later leading an intentional live-in ministry. Some may know or be aware of the Pink House. So it was a sister program to the Pink House Casa Shalom. And so really became a liaison, so to speak, between the church and the community. Um, and yeah, it's just been ongoing from there. Fast forward, you know, 10 years maybe. And here I am on staff going on my sixth year on staff with Every Neighborhood Partnership as a director of neighborhood development, um, which is essentially doing what I was doing over a decade ago at Saturday Sports wow. on a greater scale, of course. Um, yeah, so I, I, yeah, I could keep rambling on, but I think that gives a good sense of kind of who I am. And yeah, speak uh, about kind of the, go back to that heart piece as you um, as you think about the imagination. Um, you know, like what happened in the folks that were a part of your group that there? Why is there a dichotomy of mm. like mission as an event versus like? it's our job to care for the city holistically. Like, and you know, how have you grown in that imagination? What has helped shape that imagination yeah. for you? Yeah, I think there's, uh, community means a lot of different things to different people. Um, in a nutshell, community um, or in parallel, the word association, right? Is a group of people with a common interest and that establishes a community. And I think something special happens when we're in community. I mean, come on, we all, well, you know, most of us live through COVID and we think of all the messaging and like how important it was to somehow stay connected, right? So it was reestablished community. Anyways, I'm bringing that up because that was part of the change in my life was that there was a community around me that had a shared interest, like in regards to the long-term positive change of this place that we get to reside in, chosen language are very specifically, we get to live in. 
is important and we want to be a part of changing it in a positive way. And so I think, yeah, point being there when we're not kind of talking about it, we just kind of over, I don't know, we step over it or we just don't dwell upon it. Something more, I think, can kind of drive this mess a little better. Recently, I've really been thinking about the language of mission. And I think I've been more on a journey and both in my personal life, my faith life, um, and in life in general, um, I'm a late bloomer to the faith at 28, 29. I came to faith. I'm 44 now. Um, so very much a journey through this uh, thing we call life. We know as life. And I think there's a connotation, especially in Western culture, when it's mission, it's some are the ones implementing and some are unfortunately the objectified and mm. there is a clear pathway forward about how we're going to fulfill this task that we refer to as our mission. Yes. And so what I've been reflecting on lately is like, what if we invited one another to co-journey together and figure it out as we go, right? Where I think journeying I just think of, you know, the story of Jesus walking through the desert, right? Or excuse me, the two brothers, I forget their names, but they're walking through the desert and Jesus appears next to them, right? And yeah, road to mass, thank you. And they're like, wait, who was that, right? And it's like just a real snippet of an example of what it means to journey together right there. And I think we miss that. Um, and in that journeying, I'm, uh, I have an open posture to learn, to co-create, co-invent, and co-dream of what, what is to come, where I think there's been a lot of undertones to when we say we're on mission, again, none of that, there's not an opportunity, or I should say limited opportunity for co-learning, co-dreaming, co-creating. Um, it, it's just more focus-driven. Yeah. What I'm hearing in your story, and I think is really reflective for all of us, is we have to encounter folks in a community of, of believers, of Christian believers that have a different take on the city and what hmm. what God is inviting them into. And that has that, that community has radically shaped your vision. You're now a part of that work. Um, along that way, are there like scriptural passages? Is there like a new a new are there certain people that really helped you go? God cares for this city and mm. God actually wants us to be a part of its transformation. Yeah, that's good, man. Um, yeah, I've, uh, yeah, what's it? The uh, first John in the message says that Jesus moved into the neighborhood, right? I think it was our, uh, yeah, belated, John 1 1. Yeah, our belated brother H. Spees, I think was the first one I heard speak on that. Uh, man, that was some years ago. And it was like, whoa, wait, what? Jesus is in the neighborhood. <laughs> um, <laughs> Where's he at, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go hang out with that guy. Um, yeah, and then it's, it's. I mean, not to get too theological here, but, you know, I think something I wrote down in preparation for this was like, God created, Jesus walked, and now the Holy Spirit is with or dwells mm. with, right? And so it's like, yeah, Jesus is in the neighborhood, and actually it's through me. The Holy, the Holy Spirit's dwelling amongst us and in us, wants to use us just as Jesus was used as he walked through this earth. So I think there's a theological inclination there of kind of, you know, where I'm at. Um, and yeah, that Jesus came and moved into the neighborhood. Like, that's quite profound, you know? Like, I mean, I invite anyone to go out next time you're by a garden or buy some dirt, pick up that dirt and like, like, okay, we go back to the beginning of scripture and like, that's what God used. He picked up the dirt and breathed right? And it was created. And then you look at the Jesus person and it's like, this person actually walked on this same soil, maybe not in the continent I'm in now, but he literally walked on this soil that God created. And I mean, and even had a name, Jesus of yes, Nazareth. Nazareth. Yeah, like right. He was identified Good, by man. a city, by yeah. a place, right? Yes, totally. Yeah. I mean, think about when you go somewhere, right? Where are you from? First, it's like, your name, what do you do, and where are you from? So you're right on, man. They're always, you know, that's connected. I'm thinking about where it goes wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm thinking about, at least in evangelical spaces and Protestant spaces, we spend a lot of time fo fixating, focused on the Great Commission for a lot of good reasons, right? Um Jesus is very, like, very specific. Like, you will be my witnesses in these specific places, right? Um, I think where that can become 
without a good the- theology of Holy Spirit, mm. that becomes a lot of pressure mm. to just be the one who has to, you are the only one who can bring this message mm. forward, right? You're the only one that has the good news. When in reality, like God creates beauty, he creates goodness. Those things are already inherently in places that mm. we go in and see mm-hmm. and be a part of. And so what if the good news of Jesus Christ, um, yes, you hold it in your body and you're supposed to be an ambassador of that and a minister of reconciliation in that along with the Holy Spirit as you go, mm-hmm. as Jesus mm-hmm. went, right? Um, yes, he was on mission, but all of the things. We could talk about him yeah. forever, right? How interruptible he was, yeah. how he just how he interacted with people, he's Mm -hmm. the way forward. Mm -hmm. And instead in our Western culture today, Mm -hmm. where it's just about like a checkbox, like Mm -hmm. we just got to check off a task. Mm -hmm. It can be so easy to just be like, well, I have the gospel and I need to share it. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we get into a mindset instead of looking at the example of Jesus and Mm -hmm. how, how he was the good news Mm -hmm. and how he, you know, walked and talked and was amongst his own people. Yeah. And I wonder, you know, I wonder if, the God incarnate Jesus, like all knowing, like I have a sense, my bias is like Jesus knew he only had X amount of days, X amount of hours, and I got to get this message out. And I wonder, the wonderment for me is, have we inherited that posture when in, re- I mean, we honestly, we don't know when we'll get to start dancing with Jesus in heaven, i.e. pass away. But I wonder if we've like self-imposed this timeline that Jesus felt he had or knew he had, right? And to what we're supposed to do in regards to this message. Now, I'm not saying we don't share the good news of Jesus Christ. I think those of you that have known me for some time know that I'm very open about my faith and I will more than happy to share why I'm hopeful and encouraging to others and uplifting and even ask random people like, I don't even know your faith, but can I pray for you? Is that okay? Or how can I pray for you? Right? Um, So anyways, just want to make sure that's clear because I'm not saying we don't do that. But again, the the wonderment is more rooted in, are we, yeah, over implying this timeline in us? And again, going back to this word of journey where, again, it's part of my story, right? It took me 28, 29 years to come to the feet of Jesus and and really be radically transformed. Like we can talk about that maybe in the next podcast, but mm-hmm. just this radical encounter with God and the Holy Spirit, which led to my submitting to Jesus and mm. wanting to mimic his life. Anyway, so again, perhaps there's more breadth mm-hmm. in the opportunity to share the gospel than I think we allow ourselves time to really understand. And therefore it brings this pressure of like, I got to do this. And there's people that there's folks, brothers and sisters that are called to do that. Like that is their calling and they're going to share that, the gospel message, any opportunity they have. And amen, like do that. That's you, right? My posture and my approach may not be just as similar or may not be as similar to yours, but I'm still doing it, right? So how do we affirm the other as well? And again, going back to this idea of journeying with one another. Yeah. Yeah. We've fleshed it out a little bit, but I think that we, it's easy to look at our city and it's Fresno specific, but yeah, if anyone lives in another city too and look at all the things that are wrong or hard. We get all the jokes, the butt crack or the armpit. Yes, there's nothing to do in Fresno. Yeah, Yeah, right. Um, Yeah, and we see the blight. We see the disrepair. We see homelessness like every, you know, most places that you drive, why does it matter as believers, as citizens, as people that live in a city that we that we love it and that we contend for its thriving? Is that open to all of us? Yes, I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you're the guest, so we'll yeah, give it to you first. Uh, I'll throw out my two cents. Yeah, why is it important? That's good. I mean... I asked this question with love, but are you important? Am I important? Right? Yeah. And I think it took me a long time to realize I was important. Right? And I think the scripture, you know, summarizes that as love others as you as you have loved yourself. And, you know, some days that's harder to do, right? Let's just be totally honest about it. But it's not really until I begin to have a sense of respect and value for my own self-worth and my own self-dignity that I can begin to look outward 
and see that same value in others. And even, you know, even as a believer, I can find myself, you know, not looking out with such a posture. Anyways, I think that's the foundation um, to be able to look out into our city, to your neighborhood, to the neighbor who lives next to you, whether that's an apartment, a condo, a dorm, or a house, and be able to see, as what we teach a lot, is see the glass half full. Now, I know theologically we're filled to the brim and overflowing. That's the idea we strive to have. But again, realistically, yeah, life's hard and bumps and bruises come along the way. But can I still see the glass half full when I look at someone else and not tell a narrative, fight the challenge of creating a narrative in my mind about what is actually happening across the street or next door. We have no idea. And again, looking back at the Jesus uh, person, uh, I think of a, of a blurb, uh, excuse me, a blog a colleague just wrote about, you know, I think it's uh, Matthew 5, right? Where Jesus is walking into the city. Um, don't yeah, call me that. the pools of asylum, yeah. No, 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 oh. or, uh, the blind beggar. Yeah. Uh, oh, I thought, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm thinking of Messiah. It, that's all right. Um, and I'm probably quoting the wrong chapter, but we all know the story, right? Jesus is walking in the temple or into the city. The blind beggar keeps yelling, Jesus of Nazareth. And then Jesus' disciples are like, hey, man, quiet down. Dude. And he's like, <laughs> gets louder. Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth, excuse me. And Jesus walks over eventually and it's like, hey, what do you want? Right. And it's like, again, Jesus seen this value in this other person, right? Because I believe Jesus already you know, inherently carrying this self-value. So now he's able to project that onto somebody else and see the value in the other and not pre-script what's happening impose. in this. Yeah, or impose what's happening in that situation, but to be curious and to be a learner and to just say, hey, yeah, what do you want? And I think, you know, early on when I first read these stories, it was like, oh, he wants to see. Like, <laughs> he's blind, bro. Like, come on. If I have a bum you know, knee, I want to walk, like, without a limb. Yes, it seems so obvious. Seems so obvious yeah. what needs to be done and just do it so we can fix the thing, mm. right? And it's like, hold on. Mm. Again, there's this, maybe there's a pressure of, like, I got to finish this as soon as possible, where it's like we're self-imposing that. And in this narrative, Jesus slows it down, right? And just, yeah, what's going on? What do you need? And obviously he... The story goes on to say he wants to see him. Jesus gives him his sight. Anyways, well, and gives so, yeah. him the dignity to answer Absolutely. the question. Right. That's so on good. his terms, his way. So yes. good. Yeah. Yeah. He might not have said that. He might not have. Jesus You're absolutely gave right. him the space right. to answer the question how he wanted absolutely. to answer. That's yeah. so good. I, I, I think for me, as I come at the question, I think it's, you know, one of the things I come from like a suburban childhood. So, and a church and a faith perspective that was distant, the city was, had a, like an evil persona, right? We kind of avoid the city. We get away from the city. We are like, that's darkness. Not like, of this, this world. This present darkness uh, is the city and this, what the city represents. Um, and so I think, you know, the passage that gets misused a lot, but still is so powerful for me is Jeremiah 29, where, mm -hmm. you know, through the prophet, like God says, two people who are in enemy territory in the place they don't want to be, right. God says, like, your flourishing, your well-being will be found in the city's well-being. Seek its well-being, serve it, love it, care for it, you know, plant gardens, raise kids, get married invest in this place because that's where you will actually find your blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that vision of like, instead of it being avoided and safety in a bubble being put around me and my family and, and like, I'm actually, as I encounter folks that are different than me, places that are different from me, that's where I actually am transformed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some of this work that I get to do now, I'm like, people are like, oh, you're so like, thanks for doing it. You know? And I'm like, I need it. Like I would be a worse person. I'd be a more selfish. I'd have more me on this planet if it's like about my journey and my thing. Right. And so I think that the vision of like, we actually got to find unique places that are our, our ways to, to seek the city's well being. Mm -hmm. That is the call for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Not just like a special select few. It, you don't have to save the world. You're not going to. You do one simple thing to love the city well, mm -hmm. just be faithful to it, you know? Um, that is so good. So. And it takes, I think that it takes the pressure off of like, 
what's my specific gift to give? Mm. Like, what a what are the gifts that other people can give to you? Mm-hmm. And how can you learn from others that don't look like you, don't yeah. think like you, don't vote like you, don't live by you, mm. and um, see what God wants to tell you through them. Mm. I heard recently that um, there's guaranteed places of encounter with the Holy Spirit that are laid out in Scripture, and one of them is the poor. So it's like we talk about like, mm-hmm. we want, you know, I want to spend time with Jesus. I want to mm-hmm. be by him. I want to mm-hmm. know him. Mm-hmm. Go be with the poor. Mm-hmm. It's a mandate. Like he did. <laughs> like yeah. he did. Totally. So it's just, in, I mean, there was five, but one of the, that one hit me because I'm like, man, we don't do that often. Mm. Um, we don't think that that's where he's going to be. Yeah. But he is. That's good. Two thoughts that come to mind. And I know. I don't know what the definition is of a master gardener, but uh, in my eyes, Andrew is a master gardener. <laughs> Love my trees. Yes. <laughs> um, but there's this thing called grafting, right? Or known as grafting, um, where you end up with these random fruits that are like hybrids of what the original two trees were. And that's what I hear you saying, Andrew, is like, we have to be grafted into our city. And intertwine our lives. Yes, where something new will come out of that grafting. And I think what happened, or don't mean to speak on behalf of other people here, but there's a broad, broad stroke here, but there's a sense of fear in that, mm. right? Like I'm going to become something different than what I am now. <laughs> I kind of chuckle because like, yeah, that's kind of what it means to say yes to Jesus um, and like submit to the ways as best as you can today. And in the next minute for some of us, and yes, that is going to change your life. You are being grafted as we speak for those of that are following Jesus and desiring to follow his footsteps. You are grafted already. And I hear you inviting us to say, how do we do that now on a practical level with the most valuable thing we have, which is not the assets that we've acquired, but yet our lives, right? That was the most valuable thing God gave us was the life of Jesus. So how do we do that in return? We graft ourselves um, into areas of our city or neighbors or neighborhoods uh, that will ultimately produce something different. Yeah, that's powerful, man. Your story, how you opened when yeah. you're flying in on Fresno. Oh, yeah. It reminded me of we've only lived here for two years and we were driving around it and I'm bawling in mm. the back seat of the van. And I'm like having this weird experience. Like my husband's in the front with people we don't know mm. and I'm just bawling. Mm-hmm. And we got back to the hotel and he's considering taking this job. And I told him word verbatim, I said, Great if you get this job, but mm-hmm. I think that God wants us in Fresno. Wow. Like in this, like in a place, wow. like in a city for mm-hmm. a reason. Mm-hmm. And I've never felt that we've lived all over California. I was okay. like, I've never felt that way before. Yeah. And I think that Jesus and the Spirit, are, He roams and He looks for people that are willing to be mm. in, a, in a place, in a mm. space, because he's asked us to be salt. He's mm. asked us to be light. Mm. And I remember being so afraid mm. and being like, what does that mean? Mm. Like my life will change. I work remote. Mm-hmm. My boss lives in a different state. <laughs> like what does that mean to be in a, in a place, in a space? And yeah. so that fear is real. Yeah. And But the fruit mm. on the other side mm. is sweeter yeah you know um, yeah you know you bring up something really interesting that you know i'm not sure if you're alluding to this or not but some may be listening to this thinking yeah i'm i'm an introvert mm-hmm. right and i feel super convicted that i got to be this extrovert type of person to do this uh, great commission right or fulfill this you fill in the blank mission and i'm yeah i, I want to come back to this yes. idea of fear that you i wrote down a note here i would love to talk about maybe a little bit but I do want to, you know, just encourage people that are listening, like there's so many ways to be grafted into the city, right? That, you know, and when I'm saying city, I, I, it's all that comes underneath that umbrella, right? I don't want people to hear like you have to be like at city hall doing something. That's not mm, what I'm saying. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. like, there's many layers to what makes up a city. And you can be that person that's, yeah, you're you're texting everybody to make sure they're going to show up to the thing or... You know, there's so many ways, right, that people, all of us are needed in this work. 
And I just want to affirm folks that are hearing this that have heard for too long and have felt the tension of like, I'm not the front of the so house person. Yeah. Well, and I think what we're inviting folks into in this starting here is this is a vision, mm. right? So it's a way of seeing your community. It's a way gotcha. of reading the scriptures. It's a way yeah. of living your life other than a practice. Mm. It, it may have a practice. It may have a way that you actually get involved and live it out. But when you're driving around the city, are you thinking this is the place I'm called to give my life to? Like, and whatever that looks like, are you praying for the city? Are you, are you hopeful about this place? Or are you, uh, you know, we're like, we're un, uh, unabashed gonna make you a Fresno fan. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you That's don't right. live in a Fresno. That's right. Because yeah. we believe in this place yes. and we want you to love your place as much as we love this right. place, right? And I think God is inviting us into that journey mm-hmm. to say, hey, be be hoping for that transformation. Be mm-hmm. hoping for these mm-hmm. little God moments where what what the what the vision, the yeah. scriptural vision of the yeah. kingdom is yeah. look, begins to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, we've used as a starting theme uh, verse, EMPs use this verse from Isaiah um, and I'll, I'll read it. It is long, but it's worth uh, hearing in its totality because I think again, we're, we're saying like, God is inviting us into this place, but what happens when God has his way, right? Like mm-hmm. what happens in a city when God rules? Mm-hmm. Um, and this is what the prophet Isaiah says. It says, see, I've created a new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind, but be glad and rejoice for in what I will create, it will be a delight and to its people, a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and crying will be heard no more. Never again will there be the days of an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not live out its whole life. Those who die at a hundred will be thought a mere child. The one who falls will reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them or plant and others eat. As for the days of a tree, they will be the days of my people and my people will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain. They will not bear children to be doomed to misfortune. They will be people blessed by the Lord and their descendants. They will call, I will answer. The wolf and the lamb will feed together. The lion will eat straw with an ox and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on my holy mountain, says the Lord. Mm. And I, I think in a city that... We're, we're the tail of those stats, right? Like premature birth and unhoused and like uh, labor issues. Like all of that is our story. Mm-hmm. But like when God has his way and as we're a part of that transformation, that story changes. And we're not gonna see the full vision of that. That's, that's for a new day. But man, we get to be a part of that now. And that's a holistic thing. That's not just people to coming to know Jesus. That's the roads work. That's mm-hmm. right. And that's people have jobs. And mm-hmm. like, there's not, no one's on the streets anymore, right? Mm-hmm. And like, that's mm-hmm. the work that we're all invited to. And that's the vision we all want to see, um, at least here. <laughs> yeah, no, that's powerful. And I just, why can't we see it now? There'll be a day that we'll hear trumpets, right? Referring to scripture there, for those who may not be tracking Think of the big, big movements, big initiatives. We know we see the aha moment or the great celebration, but what we don't see is all the little things that had to happen to get to the big celebration or the big thing, right? And so I think holding that intention with like with one another in community, can we taste, can we see glimpses of the fulfillment of that scripture, right? Perhaps, yes, theologically, we won't see the ultimate fulfillment of this until the time comes. But I think the invitation is embedded in there. And I hear you implying here is like the invitation is embedded in there for us to work towards. Be about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Happening mm-hmm. now. Yep. Right. Like, how do I sit with them? Um, and kind of coming back to this point of the poor, right? It's like, how do I sit and learn from people who don't have the opportunity to leave their region of the city because public transportation doesn't work for them? Right. Like, they have. When you're limited to what you can and cannot do, well, think of a kid that's bored. I, so I have three children, seven and younger. And when we like take away technology, like they get super creative, right? First they cry and like, right? Yes. We have to Very go through the bad. things. Oh, yeah. Very bad. Yes. Bad. Yes. Bad parents, I know. <laughs> but, you know, you fast forward and they're like doing some really creative things. They were using the stroller the other day to like 
to shuttle each other around. They're shopping, and it's like, oh, that's probably not safe, but very fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so this is really what happens when you have less, is you have to become creative with what with what you do have, right? I come from a people group on my mother's side that sweep dirt floors to keep a clean room um, clean, right? But that's the creativity that's that that I'm alluding to. And so how do, when we're amongst people with less than financially and less access, I think God uses that to expand our horizons on what it means to be creative to try to live out that text you just read, right? And sometimes it helps us to really understand like, yeah, we need to weep with those that weep and laugh with those that laugh. And, you know, it, it just, it challenges us in such a healthy way that unfortunately um, many of us don't have the opportunity to experience, yeah. That's a powerful scripture. Well, as we begin to wrap up, love to just, you know, would you have a challenge for us or any any ways that you would, yeah, encourage us to to think about our city in a new way or think about what would be possible um, if God had his way? Yeah, wow, a lot of opportunities. I think obviously uh, E&P, we've, to Andrew's credit and some others on the team have recently wrapped up the drive tour, right? So definitely an opportunity to explore our city and be guided through that exploration um, and hear positive characteristics about areas of our city that maybe get framed a different way too often. Um, So that's an easy on-ramp somebody can do at their own leisure, right? And the undertone there is to begin to invite you to start viewing our city in a different way, right? Um, To learn about it in a more positive way. And then there's just so many learning opportunities that we have at our fingertips in our city that you can just go and explore um, just different places in our city, the African Arts Museum, Arte Americas in downtown. So, you know, those might be some cultural uh, exploration as well, and there's nothing wrong with that, but that's the beauty of Fresno that we have. We have such so many different cultures. There's the Hmong New Year that recently passed in January. Just some fun things you can do with, you know, some friends, your family. Maybe you're part of a small group. You guys can... You all can go and do something like that. And then there's other things that we obviously would love support on is there's Saturday sports initiatives, there's after school programs that someone could could um, volunteer and be a part of and just journey with, right? Um, this idea of journeying with, like don't feel like you got to come with all the answers or you got to learn it all in one session. You know, I've been doing this work for some time and learn something every day and and have an open posture to, to learning, I think is really what it's about. And if I could, I think theologically, um, this idea of having a godlike imagination and operating out of abundance is, is for me, is foundational. Um, I've, I've had jobs in my life where, yeah, I was my early 20s making six figures. And I'm trying to say is I've been on both sides of the spectrum with and without and those of you that know my testimony know I've been in, in you know, places that we don't want any of our kids to be in. Anyways, that was pre-Christ, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, I think what that's done is that's liberated me to not be afraid. Hmm. And again, there's ups and downs, bumps and bruises in life. I'm not trying to downplay those by any means. But I operate and I invite us all to operate with the mindset of abundance, don't be afraid as you engage new things, like you got to be the end all know all and that it's going to saturate you of your life. Like, like when we when we understand that we serve a God of abundance, which is the scripture that you highlighted this morning, Andrew, um, there, there is less, I'll say it that way, there's less fear that uh, something wrong is going to happen, right? And, and yeah, I invite you to embrace that and, and yeah, yeah, abundance. That's good. So I, uh, I hear you ended on a note of take the journey. Like yes. take, mm-hmm. take the journey into this abundant life in this yeah. abundant city. Yes. The city's actually abundant and God right. is inviting you into That's the journey. Good. So, And I would say for those that are listening that are like, well, what about this? Or what about this issue? Or what about this problem? Like you guys even talk about that. Stick with us because we'll probably hit it. Um, Because we're not, I think we're not naive. Mm. We know, we know what's happening. In fact, we have to be experts in Mm. the problems in order to be part of real sustainable Mm. solutions. Mm. So, um, yeah. 
And we just can't stay at this work. What I realized is you can't stay at this work as a long haul if you have a negative vision, Mm -hmm. right? Like Mm -hmm. that vision has to be transformed. So may may our vision together be transformed. Uh, May we see and desire and work towards together uh, Fresno as it is in heaven. Thanks for being with us, Daniel. Thanks for starting us off on our first episode. Yeah, be encouraged all. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to find out more about EMP, you can visit us at everyneighborhood.org or follow us at EMP Fresno. Every Neighborhood Partnership and this podcast exists to activate, equip, mobilize, and transform here in Fresno and beyond. If you liked what you've heard, please share and review what's good in the neighborhood wherever you listen. We'll see you next time.